All right. Good evening. Tonight we're going to talk about. Uh, this is just going to be some preparation for building the Roland VT4 uh, MIDI translator editor thing. So there's a couple things we're going to need to do. The first thing we're going to want to do is uh, look at the MIDI implementation chart uh, that Roland provided for the VT4. Uh, next thing we're going to look at is we're going to <coughs> find some existing software to see if there's something that's already doing what we want it to do so we don't have to work as hard in terms of finding a solution and implementing it. And uh, on that front I'll show you in a bit I did find something uh, and then we're going to brainstorm uh, step next steps and uh, how we're going to uh, develop it so pretty straightforward I'm using notepad plus plus it's a really great software you can do uh, regular expressions and find and replace and some other great stuff uh, you can also do some coding in it uh, it has different language uh, markup in it uh, so I find that pretty useful um, so let me go over the first thing I found. Um, so basically I went into Google and I said, find me a Roland VT4 editor. And uh, this uh, forum post came up. And basically this uh, guy has made a um, Max for Live patch that uh, basically does everything we want it to do. It lets you grab the... Um, the uh, parameters you can't touch in your editor and it lets you uh, manipulate them uh, and it's pretty straightforward you've got your um, different pieces of tweaking and everything only problem is it's in uh, max for live patch for Ableton uh, so it's not going to work for us because we're using Reaper so <clears throat> I uh, went ahead and downloaded it from his site uh, if you use Ableton uh, I recommend you get it because it's free um, but definitely throw him some money because he spent a pretty good amount of time uh, documenting the uh, CC controllers and translating that into the MIDI system exclusive messages. And uh, we're actually going to use some of that documentation for our implementation. So one of the um, this is one of the documents that he includes with the download and he tells you how to set it up in Ableton. Uh, but the piece we're interested in is, he says, so these are all of the um, CC changes that he um, hard-coded into his different areas. So on this left-hand side, you've got the ones that are accepted. And then on the right-hand side, it shows you what it's, uh, it's showing. So these are the names of it, and then these are the uh, values that are coming in and out. Uh, so the next thing we want to find is um, you're going to have to do some learning on MIDI uh, system exclusive messages and for that I would recommend uh, just going to YouTube and uh, searching MIDI system exclusive uh, or just sysx and you're going to find this uh, set of two videos and they are very helpful. So where is it? Yeah, it's by Ranzi or Ronzi. Uh, these two videos are very helpful. He uh, breaks down hexadecimal and explains how how you can read it and translate it into um, regular uh, MIDI messages and how you can send them. Uh, it's really short. The first one's like five minutes. Uh, same for the second one. In the first one, he explains what's going on with the hexadecimal. In the second one, he actually uh, maps it to a controller on his keyboard and uh, shows that he's controlling it with the uh, system exclusive messages that are being sent. Uh, very neat. I He has a British accent and that uh, helps me learn better. Uh, I guess because it, it just tweaks my ear so that may or may not be useful but I definitely recommend those two um, videos 
so after we've done that, uh, we've got the uh, documentation. We see here are some of the um, parameters that you couldn't necessarily touch in um, from the hardware unit itself, uh, like the, the equalizer, the low shelf, and the, the mid and the high. Also, some of the, uh, the variations of the, you can select different variations of the robot and the megaphone um, parts, um, but you can actually dial in different, um, different settings on each of those as well. Uh, so what the first thing we're going to do is figure out which controls we want to map and then we've got to figure out a way to get those messages when we determine which ones we want and we're going to have to implement them in Reaper. So then my next thing was to look for uh, JS effects um, which are basically they're like scripted effects that run in Reaper and uh, I just typed in I have a bunch of them from uh, repack uh, which I also highly recommend it's a uh, free repository of different scripts and things and um, it's very handy uh, so I just looked up in my uh, effects uh, browser I just looked up uh, MIDI CC and you see we've got a couple options. We've got uh, this MIDI CC Mapper X and this MIDI CC to SysX. So I ended up picking this MIDI CC to 6X and uh, it doesn't look like it's working right now but if you hit the edit button you can actually see all of the code that's happening um, underneath the uh, front panel. So here this is basically the uh, IDE of the um, JS development environment so you can see all of the code that ran into it and um, the, uh, the author very conveniently left us a description and he's telling us exactly what we need to do to set it up so we need a uh, MIDI CC text file that is uh, specifying what um, system exclusive messages we want to have transmitted uh, which is fine and uh, it even gives an example of how to format them um, so we'll be doing that um, but there are two caveats to this the first one is it can only send 7-bit uh, CC values they can't do 14-bit so from this uh, documentation this 0 to 127 that's our um, I believe that's our lower resolution MIDI uh, values he's talking about and I think the higher resolution ones that aren't supported are this 0 to 255 which is basically you know your 0 to 255 is 256 values um, I'm not a hundred percent sure but I think that's what that means I don't think those are supported um, so I'm gonna have to dig into that a little bit more uh, and then the other problem, obviously, uh, they only support uh, three sliders right now. So when I dig into this, uh, if you uh, select all and copy it, you can throw it into Notepad. Let's just make a new one here. And you can look at all of the uh, data here. So you can see it gets kind of, there's no word wrap in this environment. so basically each slider is saying all right here are all of my different possible CC numbers and their corresponding values and so it goes 0 to 127 and then down here this is where they're actually calling the um, the translation I believe from the slider selection whichever one they chose and then it is transforming it into hexadecimal so I think what we're going to have to do is if we want to do first we want to make sure we can get one slider to work and then once we get one slider to work we're going to tweak this code so that we can add more sliders and then eventually what we'll have is uh, every one of these CC inputs will be mapped to 
as many of these different parameters as we can have it do. And then I'll probably hook it up to my uh, Alesis MIDI mix and uh, we'll just go to town uh, linking up the different uh, CC messages and then we're going to do a full session of just running things into the VT4 and tweaking the parameters and having a good old time. Uh, but those are all of the steps we've got to figure out. So we've got to, uh, let me just write it down. Here we go. So to do, we have to identify parameters and then we have to uh, find sysx equivalents. And then we will create the sysx text file for the JS plugin. And then after that, we will test it. And then we're going to modify the script to add a slider. Uh, the other thing about this slider is uh, I don't know a lot about coding, but I know uh, I kind of know what I'm doing in terms of loops and things so I can see in the code itself um, the only real references to the sliders that I'm aware of is this uh, mem set which is basically grabbing a, an array array of sorts um, for each slider so I think we're gonna have to call each one of these out giving it a CC and an array position and then we will um, have to modify this and add a line for each slider. Uh, I didn't really see anything crazy that stood out to me here, but I'll know really quick uh, when I'm testing it. If it breaks, I'm clearly missing something. Uh, another great thing about this is you can um, recompile it and uh, update it and really uh, prototype and test and uh, iterate over your designs quickly so if I make a mistake I'll be able to pretty quickly either fix it or decide if I want to use something else so then modify script to add a slider and then uh, add all appropriate sliders and then after that we're going to save as an effects chain <clears throat> And we're going to basically we're going to create a track uh, track template. So we'll have this F FX chain of here's my MIDI out, and uh, it's going to we're going to send out uh, the MIDI to the hardware, probably through the USB MIDI, and then we're going to bring the audio. I'll probably send the audio out from Reaper, and then I'll bring the audio back in onto a track. And uh, I haven't really figured out how I'm gonna put that in to be recorded by the video and um, <clears throat> after I after I have all of that working I'm just gonna save it as a track template so whenever I want to add VT4 to something I'll just have audio and I'll open up my track template throw the VT4 in there and just drag the audio on top of it and then I can just um, go crazy with it and then that's it. So after I save it, then I'm going to uh, map the uh, MIDI mix to it. The the MIDI mix actually has a uh, it has an editor, so I can specify whatever CCs I want. So I'll probably just also save this as a preset and uh, just map all those, and then I don't have to do an extra step of going into the MIDI here and doing a learn through like the parameters and a MIDI link and all that. Uh, if I can just hard code it to the MIDI mix, I'll just do that. It's easier. That MIDI mix to uh, sliders and then save a track template. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I'm going to work on this. It'll probably take a couple days. And uh, next time I post, I should have some... I want to have at least maybe 
one to four already finished and we can see some results. Uh, if you want to follow along at home, you're welcome to try and find that MIDI CC to SysX, uh, JSFX, this is the author, and, um, and you can try it out at home as well. All right, so if you want to get subscribed, hit like, all of that good stuff, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye.